G'day. What a huge weekend it was here in Melbourne for the Australian Grand Prix. There's a lot of things that you did not see from the television coverage. And in this video, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes of what was one of the biggest sporting events ever seen in this country. Let's start with the crowd. Over 444,000 people. Now I'm gonna do a video that deals only with the Melbourne Walk later this week, but I'll give you a little bit of a background. Uh, people would rush to get there from um, all the gates that were open. I can tell you gate one is the best gate to go in if you wanna get a front row at the Melbourne Walk. Most of the drivers did it. Uh, Ferrari drivers, Lando did it every day. Daniel Ricciardo, absolutely huge. Alex Albon, I remember, and, and a whole lot of others. Lewis only did it on the Sunday, and you can see why, because he was absolutely swarmed by by the media and the crowd were going crazy. In fact, there was some concern that people would get crushed at the front because there were probably 2,000 people in that area all clamoring for a glimpse, a photo, a selfie of their favorite star. Nico Hulkenberg only did it the Sunday and he only went the far end too, so he got out of it rather lightly. But more about that in an upcoming video. But let's talk about the race, and it was absolutely crazy. I want to jump to Park Ferme. I was waiting to get out onto the track about 10 laps from the end of the race, and of course we had that stoppage three laps prior. When all the cars came in to queue up for the first restart towards the end of the race, I had this great view of what was going on. I had George Russell coming backwards and forwards. I could see Lewis Hamilton getting out of the car, and he's aided by this gentleman because, of course, he's no longer working with Angela Cullen, this gentleman handles his hair when he puts his uh, balaclava on, and this was the first time I realized that he has a hair lackey around his wrist that he uses to tie his hair up. I thought Nico Hulkenberg was gonna end up in fourth because his car was four back in the queue, but of course he ended up seventh, but it was still a great result for him, and I think you'll find that he might have gone out late on Sunday night celebrating that marvelous result. During FP2, I went out to the final turn and I was shooting these shots and you are very close to those cars, maybe a meter and a half. They make a hell of a noise when they go on the rumble strip here on the curbing. But it also sends these vibrations through the wire fence and it fairly rattles. And I think that's probably the first time I've really noticed that. Let's jump to fashion now, and Lewis Hamilton wore these four outfits over the four days, but I thought Zhou Guan Yu's outfit on the Thursday was pretty impressive. I asked him where it was from, and uh, it's from a designer called Kid Super, I believe from New York. George Russell and Lando Norris, well, I couldn't tell them apart on Thursday with these two outfits, very similar. And who was the best dressed man in the paddock on the weekend? Well, I kind of think, and I always say this, Yuki Tsunoda's dad. Nobuaki just turns it on. He is absolute style and often wears a scarf. Valtteri Bottas's fashion on the Thursday was very local, wasn't it? Thongs, stubbies, and a tank top. That won him a lot of Australian fans and New Zealanders. Celebrity-wise, who do we have? Uh, Kylie Minogue was probably the biggest one that I saw there. She was with Christian Horner. We also had The Fencer, who is a man who makes a living out of stabbing people, as he says. Scotty James, the snowboarder, was popular. And I should say a special thank you to Mark Sutton, a fellow photographer, because the camera I'm using to video this video, I left on my desk in the media center on one of the nights. And I didn't realize it until very late that night, I was watching one of Mark's stories and I saw this. This is a shout out to Kim Illman, who has once again left something behind in the media center. And that's not the first time he's found something and returned it to me. But did he return it to me? No. Well, yes, he did. He actually put it in his locker, but then he put up a poll the next day asking people to vote. Should he leave it on my desk or should he leave it in the bin? And 68% of you said leave it in the bin. Thanks very much. And once again, Mark, thank you for returning that to me. It's becoming a habit. I want to show you this 100 euro note. It's tough to see, but there's a signature on here. Whose signature? Well, I'll tell you the story. I did a signed print offering with Toto Wolf, and uh, we've picked a children's charity in Perth where we're going to donate uh, half the proceeds for the sale of these signed prints. But Toto had a friend in his office while we were signing this print, and the guy said straight away, look, I'll buy one. So he paid 200 euros. And so Toto then grabbed this note, signed it uh, for a bit of fun, and then promptly went and defaced his friend's picture with this. But I can tell you right now, Toto is a joy to work with. He is a funny, funny guy. Other signings I did on the weekend, Esteban Ocon, he ha oh no, I've got to tell you about his shoes he wore on the Thursday. Have a look at these. One of only 25 pairs made, and they are quite remarkable. Oh, and also his signature has a little bit of a story behind it. It's coming from the inspiration of Michael. Um, he basically had the MS signature with the road behind, below, and that should be basically a motorbike or a car 
um, there should be two wheels, the helmet and the road below. And I've added obviously my race number. So EO Helmet Road 31 with the number. Those prints are now available at kimillman.com and you will want to get one of those because it is a memorable thing to win your first race. Other signed prints that I squared away on the weekend, uh, let's talk about Nico Hulkenberg. Very quick signature, hilarious to work with. You can get those at kimillman.com. Apart from Oscar, which we did Thursday, and if you saw my video, you would have seen that. I also spent a little bit of time with the very entertaining Fernando Alonso. And was it in the hospitality suite? No. It was in his driver's room, which would measure three meters by 1.5 meters. And there's a massage table in there as well. Very squashy, but we managed to get them all done. They sold out in two days. Little wonder, given the remarkable form that Fernando is in, in season 2023. Thank you to those who came to my meet and greet on Friday between FP1 and 2. About 75 of you, lovely to have a chat, and I'll be doing another one in Miami and one in Imola, plus other events throughout the year. For those of you who aren't aware, we don't play the same football as they do in Europe. We play Australian rules football, which is a completely different game. It's uh, using a different ball, similar to rugby, but nothing like rugby. And Yuki Sonoda had a kick with one out on the track with Josh, his Australian social media guy. And how did I rate his kicking skills? Well, I think he needs to do a little bit more practice. Next up, two podium stories. The first one is the podium finishes for my driver's hair ranked video, which I put up a couple of weeks ago. Now, I actually had prize packages delivered to me from Revlon of these beautiful American Crew products, and I delivered a prize package to each of the top three. I went to Logan first up, and he was very impressed to find out that he'd won it. Next day, I went and saw George and uh, said, look, you were on the podium. Here's your prize package. And he said, who won? Logan. Huh and uh, he was good-natured about it, but uh, the funniest reaction was from Carlos. So on the Sunday morning, I found him going into the hospitality suite. I bailed him up and said, here's your prize package because you were a podium finisher for my driver's hair rank video. And he said, what, I didn't win? No, you didn't win, Logan won. And his response, that's bullshit. But he was thankful for the prize package and as always, good-natured about it. So a big thanks to Revlon for stumping up there for some marvelous product and I'll put a link to their site in the description below. And in that same video, I ranked the driver's beards, one to eight, because only eight of them had beards, and the winner was Kevin Magnuson. And thank you to 1821 Man Made, who stumped up a beautiful package of their products for me to give to Kevin. I did that on the Friday morning, and Kevin actually thought you could drink this one. Um, trust me, this is not alcohol. This is for uh, ensuring fine hair on the face. Oh, and while you were waiting for the drivers to come up on the podium, I was watching the most extraordinary goings on just behind the photography tower. This is on pit wall. And what was happening was that the crowd were angry that security staff were boarding up this hole that was in the fence where normally driver could come in or out of the pits by going through that hole. But these guys weren't having a bar of this board being put up because then they couldn't see the podium. So every time security staff would put this in, they'd smash it down. Eventually they got a wire fence and they used cable ties and a lock to put that in place, but still they kicked and smashed and there was swearing and all sorts going on. And then the police were called in and that seemed to calm down things a tad. But in the end, I think the solution was that the board was so broken that they took it out, which at least meant that the crowd could see through the mesh for the podium ceremony. It was a very busy weekend of photography and I was thankful to have my son Jace shooting with me. And thank you to Megan for this lovely photo too. Uh, without Jace, I wouldn't have got these shots of Charles going off at turn three. And what a bad run this fella is having. I think all of us are keen to see him do well. He's certainly due some good luck, isn't he? And which Instagram post of mine had the most comments? This one about Michael Massey. It appears that a number of you don't take too kindly to Michael. I like the man, and uh, 560 plus comments about him, probably two thirds negative, but he was indeed in the paddock because he was working with uh, the V8s here in Australia as part of his new role. I'll mention this in more detail in my Drivers Drove video this week, but Daniel Ricciardo was wearing this Ford Red Bull jacket, but he was actually doing some PR for the team. And I'll, as I said, I'll tell you more about that in an upcoming video. Oh, do you know this fellow? This is Troy. He's from the Greeters Guild. He was very popular on the Friday. What's his role? Well, he was greeting drivers as they came in. He's actually a UK comedian, and I've followed him for some time on TikTok and love his work. Fever dream of choice for the discerning housewife. <laughs> 
so I was thrilled to see him have a chat with him and Troy will feature in my Men of the Paddock post this week on Instagram. And of course, I do hope that you're all following me on Instagram. If not, remedy that straight away, please. Alex Albon was up to his old tricks defacing big heads out in the uh, Melbourne Walk. And where do these big heads come from? Well, they are given out by the organiser. They were lined up here neatly every morning, ready to be handed out to the most enthusiastic fans. Did you notice that the steak logo wasn't on the Alfa Romeo car this weekend? Why is that, you ask? Well, Australian gambling laws say that unless you are registered in this country, you can't be promoted. And while the gambling platform is owned by an Australian, it's registered in the Caribbean, obviously, for tax reasons. Hence, you would have seen the Kick logo, which is a streaming platform owned by them, I'm told. So summing up the weekend that I had at the Australian Grand Prix, it was full on, highly enjoyable, Weather was lousy for two of the three days. Beautiful on Sunday. In fact, if you watched the telecast on Sunday, you would have been very impressed with the way Melbourne shaped up. So in summing up, the Australian Grand Prix is an absolute favourite of just about everyone who comes here with the travelling F1 circus. And it's not hard to understand why. Coming up shortly too, I'll give you a little tempter here. I could be sending you and a friend to an upcoming F1 race as a guest of F1 experiences. So yes, you will get some hospitality, you will get some track tours, you'll get a whole lot of stuff that you have never thought possible. Stay tuned on my Instagram channel and here on YouTube. If you've enjoyed the video, now is the time to click the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so, and become a member. You'll find all of my digital images at ProStarPicks.com. If you're an F1 fan and you're looking for some marvellous product, go to my KimElman.com website where you'll find a range of merchandise, signed driver prints by a number of drivers and two team principals, F1 photo books, wall art and Lightroom presets. And for my best images live from the track and through the week, go to Instagram and search at Kim Illman. Thanks for watching and pay stashing it. And then we get to...